Bill, welcome back to the theater. You opened this place with Paul Revere yeah. five and a half years ago. Boy, boy, <laughs> that, it seems, uh, yeah, it seems like yesterday. And it's just one of, the, one of our favorite rooms in the whole world. Paul, Paul said that too. It's just a great room. Well, Paul said it because, you see, he grabbed the back of one of the uh, Golden Circle seats and stole it from me. Did you know that? Oh, well, yeah, <laughs> I think I did know that. I got four of them. No, no, I didn't. Would you repeat that story about where the Righteous Brothers came from? You've told me before, but I'd love to hear it again, because I think it was the Rivingtons that you were uh, performing with, right? Well, we, we were, uh, you mean how we got named? How we got the name. We, uh, we were working in a, a, small, a small club in uh, Orange County where Bobby and I were raised. And there was five of us. We were the Paramours. And in the town, there was, there was a, uh, a Marine base. And a lot of the black Marines heard that there was these two white guys <laughs> down at the nightclub singing rhythm and blues. And so they started coming down to the club. And, and if you saw a, a great, say, a 57 Chevy, a white guy, we might in 50s would have said, boy, that's, that's cool, dude. Yeah. Well, a black guy was, might would say, well, that's right, well, what a righteous looking car, yeah. which meant good. And uh, if they liked you as a friend, they'd call you a brother. So when Bobby and I would come to work, they would, uh, they would say, uh, hey, righteous brother, how you doing? <laughs> because I know you and I, and I watched it uh, when you got the Grammy for the time of, of, your, of, your, of our of the time, of my, the time of my life. Sorry, from uh, Dirty Dancing and you and Jennifer Warren. Well, you know, I've had the time of my life. I'm 11 feeling. I don't know how big it is here, but it, in a, America, it's the most played record in the history of American radio, which is just, I can't screw my head onto that. I, I don't know. Uh, but time of my life has to be the biggest record I've ever was involved. I don't know how you get bigger than love and feeling, but it, it was number one at the same time all over the world. You became good friends with Elvis, and tell everybody what a warm, wonderful guy he was, because that's how I found him. I found him to be a great guy. He was just this amazingly sweet uh, guy, you know. But I left the, the Righteous Brothers in about 68 for about five years, and, and I was working the, uh, the Hilton, where Elvis was, was working. And uh, every night, or most nights, he, before he would getting ready to go on to do his 12 o'clock show. He'd call my dressing room and say, Bill, come on down. Uh, <clears throat> so I would go down to his dressing room and it would be just him and his hairdresser <clears throat> and, and myself. So we would talk for about 15 minutes while the guy was doing yeah. his hair. So I really got to know him as Elvis because he would ask me, you know, how did you get that voice? What did you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he always wanted to sound like a, a black bass singer. And that's what he thought I was. was a, and he, when he did Love and Feeling, he would turn his back to the audience. And he'd hit the chord. He'd go, you never close. You, and he would turn around. Yes. Well, his, his boys wanted me to come backstage. They would turn his mic off. And when he goes, you never close. I would do, you never close. I never did it. I should have. It would have freaked him out. But... Uh, he was a sweet, wonderful, wonderful guy. He's the only, he's the only other guy, uh, singer in the world, who gave me the finger on stage. <laughs> I don't know if you can use that. No, or not. sure I can.